Okay, I oh, forgot the 10 it. second mark. We're flipping over. <coughs> Here, cheers. And we should be live. Cheers, everyone. We're live. So welcome everyone to another edition of Wine and Whiskey Wednesday. Wednesday at eight o'clock with your hot ninjas. Hot. Hot, hot ninjas. And there's Teresa. Give me a second and let me let her in, into the room. So how's everyone doing tonight? Fantastic. Awesome. Wonderful. Excellent. We've got a couple more panelists jumping in. So we'll just get them, let them in. There we are. There we so are. we've got a full house tonight. Hey, Teresa. How are you? And Pat and Scotty. Nice. Ah. Patty and Scott. Sorry, not Pat and Scotty. <laughs> we get that sometimes. Sorry. Too much wine already, I guess I've started. Um, Chris, did you know if Connie is still joining us? She's not? I okay. I don't believe she's going to make it. No. Okay. No Please problem. Um, and as I said, if the other half of the partnership doesn't, it just means it's all your point of view. She doesn't get to do Right. She doesn't get a say. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. So welcome, everyone. Our, our topic for tonight, as you know, our, our theme is hot, which is hiring, onboarding team, and training. And so we thought we'd put a little bit of a different spin on it and look at it from the perspective. And we see this much, much more frequently in our industry where there are um, either spouses who are going into business together, siblings who are going into business together, just relationships, family relationships um, that, are, that are going in business together. And that adds a whole new dynamic. And so we thought that, that we would ask um, some people in our audience who actually are living this. Steve and I do live it as we are husband and wife, if you aren't aware. And if you aren't aware that Steve and I um, are husband and wife, it may explain some of the back and forth that goes back and forth with us. Um, you probably thought, well, they're just always, you know, just so snarky with each other. How can they stay partners? But it's also married. But it does add a different dynamic to the business relationship. So I thought that, um, that it would be a great conversation. Um, so we have pretty much most of you are both sides of the equation. We've got both partners, but we do have some that aren't both partners. Um, and so it, it, I think it's gonna be a great conversation. So I thought that perhaps we could start with introducing yourself, um, introducing your relationship with your partner. And if both of you are, are on the call, maybe you just identify who the other partner is um, and the number of years that you have been in business together. So let's start with that. Who would like to get started? I'll kick it off if you'd like. Um, so I'm in business, as many people know, with uh, with my father. Um, it's how long have we been in business together? Um, I guess I first did my first job with him when I was probably about 14. Um, <laughs> pretty much as soon as, as soon as he could income split with me, right? <laughs> <laughs> um but uh so you know we've been working together a, a, a long time off and on um you know i did have a, a period where i went off on my own um we've definitely it's it's an interesting dynamic working with um your father and also going through that transition for us um from him being um you know, the big cheese and making all the decisions to him um, being more focused on retirement and enjoying life. He's down in, in Puerto Vallarta right now enjoying the sun. Uh, he was supposed to to uh, join us today, but maybe had one too many Coronas, uh, as can happen down there. <laughs> Uh, hopefully he may he may realize oh shoot I'm supposed to be on a call and, and hop in later today. No uh, problem. And, but, and um, Andrew didn't introduce himself. It's Andrew Wall as well. Um, and so your dynamic is completely different as well because you worked for your dad first before you went into business with him. So absolutely. that's a little bit different than um, being equal partners either right off the bat or or anything else. So that'll be an interesting twist. Um, on the conversation. And I think one other perspective I just might add before turning it over to the other guests is uh, 
watching my dad and my stepmother work together uh, and, and seeing it from an outsider's por- perspective or a child's perspective and watching the pros and cons of that relationship, even though while my stepmother was not technically a partner in the business, um, obviously she was working in the business and a partner in the relationship, which uh, gave her in many respects more than more than 50% weight in many of those conversations. Um, Absolutely. But Excellent. I'll share that, share that perspective after we hear more from the other people. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. Um, so why don't we start in my top corner? So Christian. Yeah. My name is Christian Mataraz, and I am working with my wife Tanya, who on my screen is a couple down. And hey, uh, we've been in business together for I think from day one since we started this about ten years, or at least close to that when I started begging for her help because I felt overwhelmed. Okay. Um, we're married, we've been married or together for 14 years, I think. Sorry, no, you can't ask her, she doesn't know either. She's, a short, she's waiting for me to give an answer, like give a, throw a bone to her so she can, yeah. It's something like that, I think it's 14. I think it's 14, okay. Yeah. All right, um, Tony, okay. anything This is like gonna to be an interesting <laughs> evening. <laughs> I, I wish I could tell you that he wasn't wrong, but I'm the one who watches to see if he knows the number. Otherwise, I have to count back the years Emma is old to when we met. <laughs> but it is true that he started the business um, in its kind of getting its infancy stage. And then he did beg me to move it to a bigger kind of official business. And I said, hell no. <laughs> and clearly that here meant hell yes, <laughs> because here I am. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, um, Lauren. Okay, um, Steve and I have been working together in some, some capacity, capacity since, since 1981. 1981. So that I was since I was 10. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And basically when we were first working Together, Steve was the director, and I had a primary position in our counseling agency. And then in 2009, I moved in a different direction and started doing pricing strategies for accounting professionals. And then Steve, after Steve sold our business four years later, he joined me, and now Steve is my CSO, my chief support officer, where he is in a supportive role, helping me out. We've done a total role reversal. I find that I just abdicate as opposed to train him well. So it's a something that we work on constantly. <laughs> and I would say with him being my chief support officer, he does a lot of the back end things. And we've also done a role reversal at home as well regarding um, household stuff. Anything else you wanna add? No, I mean it's been a it's been an interesting transition for me to okay, go. Okay, so, from... so hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I'll mute myself. Is there Everyone's an echo for mute. everyone else, or is it just me? There is. There is an echo, but I think it's because they're so close to each other's yeah. mi- microphone. Probably. So can one of you mute yourselves so that you're both running off of one microphone because we're hearing this big loop when both of you are. Um... Sure. Okay. Perfect. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry to cut you off. Okay. Uh, no, I was just going to say it's been it's an interesting transition because uh, I was the director and I was kind of in charge of things. And then uh, when we, like Lauren said, when they sold the business, then I went into Lauren's business and then now have become a part of her business operation. Okay, excellent. And and, and he's not a co-owner with me. He's more in a employee position with my business. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that also adds a different dynamic, um, mm-hmm. similar to when Andrew started with his father. So that will, I think that will that will be an interesting um, part of the conversation as we go as we go through this. Okay, excellent. So um, Helena is having some challenges uh, with her sound, which is why she keeps popping in and out. If everyone is um, is seeing her jumping in and out, that's why. <laughs> that's right. Can you can you hear me now? Sideways. We can okay. hear you. 
put your side with there we go <laughs> oh my gosh it's like a uh, monday on a tuesday okay sorry guys it's actually Kelly, wednesday <laughs> but okay <laughs> i've got a box of wine though so i'm good nice <laughs> Excellent. Sorry, guys. Um, every time you had me as a panelist, it would kick the sound off. So I'm trying on my phone now. So excuse okay. my tech Excellent. problems. We're really tech forward at Onjaflow, but I can't work out Zoom for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So why don't you, since your sound is all working now in your video, um, we're starting out with introduce yourself, your relationship with your partner, and, and <laughs> um, obviously isn't, um, isn't online with us. Yeah. The number of years that you've been working together and whether you started the business and he came in or he or vice versa or you started it together. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, my partner is my husband, Ian Rogers. Um, we've been running the business together for over four years now. Um, the business was actually his and I kind of stole it from him. So um, <laughs> you'll understand why. So it started off as a marketing consulting firm over eight years ago. Um, I came on four years ago to head up the finance and HR side of the business. And when I went to go get my CPA public practice license and he's not a CPA, I had to kick him off for the voting share. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically my business now. And <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just for legal purposes. Uh, don't tell CPA. Um, so, so yeah. And sorry, did I miss one of the questions? Um, you just missed your name. You didn't introduce yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Helena. Patience. <laughs> okay. I'm a CPA. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Okay, yes. Andrea, you'll need to unmute yourself. Hey. So I'm Andrea Stray. I'm from Eagle Eye Business Services. I started the company uh, about 13 years ago. I'm here with my sister-in-law, Kim, and she came on board about a year after we opened up. So it's been about 12 years that we're working together. And um, so Kim is my husband's sister, and I've been with my husband since we were childhood sweethearts. So I've known Kim since she was five years old. Very cool. And it's been a perfect fit for us. Excellent. I also have hired uh, a cousin as well that works with us. So okay. we have half family and half um, non family. Okay. Excellent. Cool. Excellent. Um, okay, and uh, so Christian's asking whether or not Andrea's um, video is lagging, and it is for me, but I, I'm always having internet issues, so I figured it was me. It's a bit slow for me, too. Yeah, we were having that. Terrible uh, too. internet today. No, nope, that's fine. The joys, the joys of technology. We applaud the renovation as well, so we're outside to find some quiet. So it's a challenge, but we're here. Yes, that, might, that might be it as well that you're outside, so further away from your router. Okay, Teresa. Hi, so I'm Teresa Flack, and uh, um, my sister, Connie Smith, and I um, started Financely five years ago, five and a half years ago. Um, I've known her for 55 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah I've known her a long time but yeah five five and a half years ago we started financially bookkeeping together okay cool. excellent and sisters obviously okay yeah, we're sisters and Scott I, oh, okay. oh sorry go ahead I was gonna say I do come from a serial entrepreneur family my, my dad and mom started business after business and always work together. So my parents always work together. My brothers, my sisters, all of them always work with my dad's co company. So it kind of runs the family. Perfect. Thank you and welcome. Uh, Scott. Hey. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, Scott and Patty Scharf. Uh, let's see, I'm 24 years into a life sentence of us being together. <laughs> Um, Actually, we've been together for 26. We've been together we've been it seems, it seems like a really long time. There are only two good years, apparently. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the uh, no, it's been good. Um, no, it's great. We uh, started catching clouds, or husband and wife, and we started catching clouds nine years ago. Uh, a little over eight years ago. A little over eight. And yeah. I basically I came downstairs. I was like, dude, if I start this business, will you help me? He was like, sure. And then like two months later, it's like, have you built it yet? So I can quit my job. And I'm like, <laughs> you have to help if you want this to be a thing. So yeah. And we're uh, uh, Helena, uh, Lena. We're opposite. So Patty had a tax practice, but we don't do. Uh, we only do accounting. We don't do ta taxes. So we looked at that. And so I'm 100% owner of Catching Clouds. It doesn't have to do with taxes. I'm a CPA. She's a CPA. And uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to be a CPA firm. So I gave the company to him. So he's 100% owner. So again, <laughs> I work more dead than alive. So I try to balance those out with foot rubs and other things to stay married. It works sometimes. Excellent. Good plan. And so we're going to have you share some of those things that help you stay married um, um, a little bit later on. So excellent. Welcome. And so uh, Bianca in our chat um, is also start said that she started uh, with her mom, Diane, and we all know um, Diane Mueller as well. So excellent. Okay, so um, my Steve, would you like to go? Perhaps tell our story since I'm doing all the talking. Uh, we don't have enough time, Juliet, to tell our story. Okay, do a really, really condensed <laughs> version like everybody else. <laughs> okay, well, um, my name is Steve Lotz, and as Juliet mentioned, we're partners, and I guess we officially have been business partners seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we were working unofficially uh, together before that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and so I started the business and then Steve joined it um, later on into the business, right? Because we're, we're turning 20 this year. We are. Yeah, our business is 20 this year. And I started it when I was five. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we've already covered some of this with your introductions. Um, but I'd like to to just kind of drill down a little bit on the reason why you went into business together. So I'll start out with, with Steve and I. So I started the business um, out of my house. It was just me and some subcontractors. And in 2010, we decided to move the business out of the house and into some office space and actually grow it like a real business, as opposed to me just creating a job for myself. We actually wanted to hire employees and and um, and scale it, I guess. And I'm not, I've never been, I guess I never used to be um, a big thinker. I'm great at here, tell me what to do and I can build it and I can do it, but not so good at having the vision to see what, what we wanted to build. And so that's where Steve, that's one of Steve's strengths. Um, and so when we decided that we wanted to scale it and build it into a big business, um, that's why Steve came on board. Anything, any other reason that you can think of that you came on board? No, I'm just glad you called me a big thinker, not a big stinker. That's what I thought you were gonna do. <laughs> okay, so, so um, if we start again with Andrew, um, the reason that you went into business together. So you, you started working for your dad when he wanted to do some income splitting, but then you went ahead and you did your, you know, you did your own thing. Why did you come back and decide that you wanted to be in business with you, with your dad? Um, well, I think for, for a lot of reasons, I think the primary reason um, was I, the, the, the ability to work together and sort of close that, that loop because it had been, when I'd left, it wasn't exactly on super positive terms. Um, I had sort of said, I had enough of this crazy old crap and I'm going off and doing my own thing. And so I think coming back really helped um, bring our relationship back to, to a much better place. So I think that's the number one reason. Um, I think there's lots of other um, pros of coming back to a big firm, um, you know, the established brand, the established credibility, uh, bigger budgets, um, lots of benefits there. Also, I had a relationship with a lot of the team members that I had been working with in the past because um, in a small business, you really become family, right? So um, even when I was off on my own, I was still having conversations and 
relationships with the whole team. So they were still a part of my, you know, family. And so working together with them was, was a big plus for me. Um, and then I think ultimately, you know, to be able to, to have that dream of, of building together the vision of this business that my dad and I, as much as we might disagree on, on lots of things, one of the things we really do agree on is sort of our vision for the future. It's just the things we disagree on is how we're getting to that vision. Um, and, and so I think that that was the real reason that, that ultimately I came back and wanted to work with them. And, you know, I think that uh, it's been, it's been a great transition. Um, lots of, you know, peaks and valleys, I think, in like there are in every relationship. Um, but I'm definitely glad. Well, I'm glad that I left um, because I think there was a, a lot of reasons why that was important. Um, but I'm even happier that I came back. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so Christian and Tanya, um, you've already told us, you know, kind of why you went into business together. Anything that you want to add to that? Mm, it's, you know what, we're really lucky and, and I'm going to say this, it's going to sound cheesy, but I have the ability to work with my best friend. And this is one of the things that I think we, we really complement each other. So I was, I was very accounting oriented, but I was shitty at managing people. And Tanya is that heart led leader <laughs> um, who she used to manage a 7-Eleven and deal with staffing and all that other stuff. And then when, um, when my business, so I was, I'm a teacher as well. I'm a college professor and that was always part-time. And then our business was part-time. I did the business basically just to fill in the gaps. And then, um, the business started to take off and the teaching took off to full-time. And before I knew it, I had two full-time jobs and Tanya left 7-Eleven, had gone back to school to, to work on a tourism hospitality um, designation. And then I begged her to come help. And because of her skills, we've shifted our whole, I don't know, we're shifting our whole thing from just being the bookkeeping to being uh, so much more than that. So it was, it was out of necessity, but it's really, we, we like working with each other, which is, has pros and cons. Yeah. You know, it's, we're, we're kind of on, we're, on the job 24 seven sometimes if you <clears throat> yes and that and we will get into that because absolutely that is one of the challenges um tanya anything you'd like to add oh i could add so much oh i'm gonna <laughs> mute my video <laughs> i unmuted when you started to talk <laughs> <laughs> um i think that I would agree that I think what makes Christian and I work so well is that they we're very different and we both really like um, what skills we each bring to the table and they're not competing. So, and Christian is super patient and he is, um, he is very wise to know when to not fight me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's, That'll probably be in our, in our strategies yeah. team with team members. Yeah. Are, okay. And, and I think that that what is big is that Christian also has a great deal of respect from seeing me operate. And so I've earned that with him. And he also knows what his skill set is and where he has room to grow. So it's really nice that uh, we don't have to compete. Uh, he doesn't care about being called the boss. I don't care about being called the boss. I just want system and orderly things and the results. And I want the relationships. I want to be happy to come to work every day. And I want to be happy to go home with him every day. So I think we do that really, really well. I think, you know, not just strategy, but naturally on who we are as well. So, okay. Excellent. And I love your shirt, Tanya. I did. I wore it on purpose. <laughs> Um, okay, so Lauren and Steve, I don't know which of you would like to go first. Um, I guess the reason that you went into business together and you touched on a little bit when you introduced yourselves. Steve and I have worked together my entire adult career, so it wasn't really a thought that I wanted to not work with him. With our first counseling agency, what happened is I ended up burning, burning out and I felt that the family took a real big toll 
with um, me working evenings and then doing compliance paperwork on the weekend, something had to change. And that's when I started looking for that next best move, which led me out of our counseling agency. That wasn't the intention. Uh, so for about four years, we worked separately in two different businesses, but then once Steve sold our business, he then gradually came back into mine. And the difficult thing that we faced is that we have very complement, well, not complementary, we have very similar skills. Mm -hmm. And because that it was difficult to really define what was Steve's domain mm -hmm. versus mine, as opposed to like Juliet, you and Steve, where Steve is great at sales and you're great at the bookkeeping part. Steve and I are both really good at the client relationship part of it. And, and so that's been our biggest challenge is figuring out what his role is. But yeah. it's, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let me also give you some perspective. When it was originally my business way, way back when uh, we had a counseling agency and six months into it, I actually asked Lauren to come into the business because I couldn't run two offices and manage 12 people all by myself. So Lauren actually came in and became one of the most valuable therapists uh, that we had. Um, and it was very, very, she was basically running a whole office and so was I. And it was very difficult when she decided to leave the business. Uh, it was a real big blow to me. Um, and I had to go through all kinds of transitions in order for that to, to really happen. In other words, he wasn't very happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 you could say that. <laughs> Even though she told me, I didn't believe it. Okay, excellent. Um, Scott and Patty. And so, you touched on a little bit as to why you went into business together. So actually, <laughs> Patty, Patty was ready to throw out her Blackberry like against a wall. Okay, Patty's very tech savvy. So I'm like the 30 plus years IT geek and everything else. She's the accountant. And she came to me and was like, can you make this contact work? And no matter how good I was as a tech, um, I can't make Blackberries do anything. But she stopped <laughs> and said, what do small businesses do when they don't have technology and accounting? Um, and we went, huh. And we started doing that. And then she went to a Sleater show years ago. 2010? Yeah, 2010, maybe. She called me after every session and was like, the cloud's here. We've got to hurry, <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Um, and I mean, I was working for a global multinational doing cloud expert communications, all that kind of stuff. And she's like, we should do this. We can go in and do this. And we started talking about it. And we just realized that we had a lot to uh, bring to the table and our skills are very complementary yeah. as well. Yeah, I was going to say that um, once we started working together, I think the first six months or so, we had a few like stapler throwing incidents and things like that. But once we got it figured out, we realized like his skill set totally set like, like we, we couldn't have made a better match. Like he is a great sales guy. I'm good at marketing. You know, I, I do the accounting. He hasn't bounced a checkbook ever, I think. <laughs> um, you know, he, I, I'm good with like managing people, but he's amazing with clients. So it's just, it's a really great symbiotic relationship. Yep. And I wouldn't want to do it. I mean, I get to, like uh, Christian said, I get to do this my, with my best friend every day and we want to do it. Our focus now is resiliency so we can keep doing this together for a long time. Yeah. Excellent. Mm. Awesome. Okay, Teresa. Okay, so Connie and I, five, year, five and a half years ago, well, actually six years ago, Connie started bugging me. I was in a large corporate job. I ran a design studio for a builder, I had like 18 employees. It was crazy, stressful. And she kept saying, we need to go into business together. And she bugged me for a year. It took her a year to convince me that, that we really should do it because Connie had a small bookkeeping company. She had five clients. Monday, she drove here. Tuesday, she drove here. Wednesday, she drove there. Thursday, she drove there. Friday, she drove to the other one. And at that time, you know, QuickBooks Online was coming in and she had already started looking at it and was playing and said, we need to get together. She needed me on the front end to help her grow this because she knows how to do the work. We like to say, um, she's the talent and I'm the hustle. So, like she is the master 
bookkeeper, like she knows it in and out. That's actually what I went to school for and did for 15 years before I switched careers. So I have the same background, but I bring it from a whole different perspective. And I feel the same way that all of you guys are saying that it's a real, we're a really good match. We bring very different skills to the table. You know, I'm sales, marketing, let me talk, let me speak to people, teach, train, lead, guide, woohoo, vision, you know, hustle. That's the stuff that I love. Connie, give her a disaster, boxes and bags of stuff, and, and she turns it into order and gives it back with a bow. So, you know, we really are able to work really well together that way. And I'm lucky too, because she's also my best friend. So I get to work with my best friend every day too. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, Andrea and Kim. Hopefully our internet's a bit better. Is that okay? It is better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so echoing everyone else, I also work with my best friend. So I'm lucky that way. I think we're still lagging though. So yeah, you we're are. gonna yeah, still are. continue to work on it and just listen for a little bit. Okay. Okay, Helena. Okay, cool. Sorry, um, what was the specific question again? <laughs> <laughs> just got wrapped up in everyone's stories. Why we started the business together, did you say? Yeah, so the reason what you went into the business together and you told us a little bit already. Yeah, so my, I mean, uh, Entreflow was an accidental business. Um, my husband has started it as a, um, a way to make some uh, income while he was starting up his first startup. So we'd never anticipated that it would turn into anything. And then after we had our first child, um, so my background, I actually study theater and English lit and uh, have a secondary teaching degree and ran around the world uh, teaching and then fell into finance and then later did my designation. So was not part of my master plan. So kind of the opposite to Teresa there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, after we had our first child, I um, I didn't want to go back to working at Lululemon as a financial analyst because I was working 60 hour weeks and I figured if I was an entrepreneur that I would work fewer hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what we all think, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> or, or if I worked those 60 hour weeks, uh, and then I'd get paid for every hour that I worked. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> I know, so stupid. Um, but anyhow, so I it was just a way for um, you know um, for us to kind of have our family unit and a bit more flexibility and what have you. Um, and the funny thing about Ian and I is, uh, if anybody knows uh, the disc profile, I'm an ENTJ and he's an INTJ, so he's basically the introverted version of me, and I'm the extroverted version of him. So mm -hmm. we actually um, are good dynamic in that we, in many ways think similarly but we because of our energetic nature uh we do challenge each other in good ways that way okay so let's start with and and we're going to keep it to one because i know there's been there's going to be a lot of them that you've got so pick your biggest one we're looking for the biggest advantage of you being in business together and some of you have already talked about it where it's the complementary skill set um, that you're basically one person is able to fill in the gaps for the skill set from the other. Is there any other big advantage? And if it is your skill set that is your biggest advantage, just say that it's your that that is what your biggest advantage is. Go ahead, John. Okay, I'll jump in. I think that my biggest advantage or our biggest advantage is that I fully trust Steve more than anybody else. I can come with him with things that. I wouldn't normally talk with other people about and know that he will give me honest feedback as to what's going on or help me kind of look at all the different angles. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. And, and I think that because we're also, we also have a therapy background, not only do we, does it work well with us, it also works well with our clients who sometimes um, have more, I, I, with that a, lack of a better word, more pathology and more need more care um, on a human side than others do. Okay, would, excellent. Patty? I would say another advantage is I had a business before this one and, and Scott wasn't involved in that. 
And I don't think that he could appreciate until we were working together, like how all consuming having a business is. And so when you're in business together, you understand why you're having a bad week and what, you know, how, how to kind of care for each other a little bit more easily because you, you're more empathetic. No, that's a great one because it is different when you're working for someone else or you're in corporate one person is and the other person is a business owner. So no, that's a, that's a great advantage is being able to relate. Okay. Um, anyone else? I think, sorry, you go ahead, Andrew. Uh, no, go ahead, Tanya. Uh, there's lots. And I'm trying to think of what yeah, one. amazing ones are, but I think one of them is, is that we get to do everything together. And I don't mean necessarily at work because even though we're at work, we never really talk. It, we function here, but when we go away, we go away together. When we have time off, we have time off together because of how we've designed everything. Okay. So I feel like I'm always involved in, I don't feel like we're missing any pieces of our life because work prevents me being a part of it or him with me, where when I did have other jobs in industry, I felt like I was missing out. Okay. Uh, my seasons were the opposite of his teaching. Holidays, I was working when they were off. The busiest times in hospitality and tourism were the times teachers were able to be with family. Yeah. So this has taken all of those things off the table. So, so your, your schedules are in event. sync. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, Sherry Lee, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Okay, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, I'd say the, the biggest benefit for us is, I guess, how well we, we know each other um, and our ability to, to just be blunt and frank with each other um, and know that even if thing, the words come out the wrong way, the, we know what the intent is behind it. Right. Um, and, and so being able to operate that way and like, you know, no pulling punches, let's just get the facts out on the table, um, which helps us, I think, move forward a, a lot better. Uh, then say maybe a traditional partner where you're more worried about, you know, saying the right thing or how you're going to present things. It's just, you know, this is what it is. Uh, and we've been very good at being able to be like, we may have a disagreement in the workplace, but we can still shut it off when it comes time to family time. Excellent. Excellent. Wow. Teresa. Um, I, I was just thinking, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Christian. Um, I was just thinking that's, what Andrew was saying, that's sort of a double-edged sword as well, like the, the bluntness. Um, I remind myself that um, Tanya's on my side because I treat her off, often, I'll treat her worse than I treat our team when she comes in as an uh, interruption or something like that. And yes. and I'll, I'll run her through the coals. And, and the other advantage a that... And a curse, right? Yeah. It's yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and, the, uh, I just wanted to quickly throw in there too that one of the advantages is that um, we we both have our skin in the game. Like we we both know that it's not just an employee employer relationship or or two separate two separate partners that have other spouses that could be contributing. We know that we're both in it, and I think because of that and because we're both um, have the same risk tolerances that we're able to strive for more. Um, or, you know, and it could be the same way as people who had the same risk tolerances, but they wanted to be more risk averse that they would hold back a little bit and feel comfortable with that. So that was my two cents. And is that sometimes, is that a bad thing that if, if you're both in the same business together, um, your livelihood pretty much depends on how you guys are doing. Whereas if one person is a business owner and another person has a job or even has a different business, then, then your risk is split as opposed to, okay, all of our eggs are in this one basket. We better make it work. Patty? Yeah, and I would say like Scott and I temper each other. Whereas Scott thinks that we can be like this $20 million company and tomorrow. I'm like, <laughs> tomorrow. And I'm like, dude, like here are, are all the things million? that will happen for that to happen. So we have to start here. So I, I keep him grounded but 
there's no way our company would be as successful as, as it is if he wasn't involved in the mix. Uh, but we balance out. Like we hired three people last week and Patty went from, yes, we're recruiting, yes, we're recruiting to, oh my God, our burden just went up and all the accounting freak out <laughs> well, stuff. Work. <laughs> and, then, and then she's like, go make it rain. I'm like, all right, I'll go make it rain. It, but it's, it, and we rarely hit the low, lows at the same time. We hit highs at the same time when we have things, but we tend to balance each other out. So yeah. it works out. Excellent. That is so funny, Patty. We went through the same thing last week. We hired three people last week, and I was like, okay, Ian, go close some proposals. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, Teresa. I was just going to say that I find we can get to decisions faster because we really understand each other. Okay. And sometimes, you know, we're halfway through a, set, a conversation and we're both already at the end because we understand each other so well that she knows where I'm going, or I know where she's going, and we, and we can, we can move, move, move ahead faster. But um, I also find, um, like Scott, you guys, um, we have the same thing. I'm dragging Connie. I'm like, yeah, we can go really big. And Connie's like, hold on a minute. We gotta look at the numbers. We gotta make sure we hire, we gotta do this right. And I'm like, no, let's go do it. So it's the same thing. We can help <laughs> each other. We can balance each other. And yeah, it really helps. That's okay. awesome. Excellent. Helena, biggest advantage? I think um, our complementary skill sets, just because we come from different backgrounds. Um, I don't think if I started this firm by myself, I'd be able to uh, afford such an amazing talent right out of the gate. So that's really helped us to scale having an amazing marketing sales guy out of the gate. Um, and then because we have different skill sets, we're able to solve different problems for our clients. That makes it really awesome from our what we're able to offer from a service perspective. Okay, excellent. And Andrea, do you want to give it another try? Sure. How's that? Oh, we we're good. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> okay, but now we missed the question. The question is biggest <laughs> advantage of being in business together with a family member or relation. Well, that is a good one. Um, I think because we know each other so well, we can just get down to business a lot of the time and um, the niceties can go aside and <laughs> we can do what needs to happen. Excellent. Kim, anything you want to add? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, Steve. Yes. How about you? Well, Biggest advantage of us being in business together? Well, I. I I don't think it's anything new. I think we've said it. I mean, I, I get to work with my best friend. Um, I get to work with the person I trust the most in the world. And I also get to work with the person I respect the most in the world. And I think if you can do all of that and, you know, have some fun at the same time while you're doing it, you know, it's, that's almost the perfect job. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to, because everyone in our audience obviously isn't in business with their partner, and we've talked about what some of the advantages are of being in business with you know, someone you trust or having the, the strong complementary skills. Does anyone have, or would anyone like to share some advice with people who are in business for themselves to be able to find those advantages without having a business partner that is a family member? How can they align themselves with someone else who has complementary skills without taking on a partner? Or I can have answer, those gaps filled? I can answer this one. Yeah. Um, so I think having some collaborative partnerships uh, would be helpful. So if I was doing this by myself, I'd wanna find um, some other people in maybe other industries or um, you know, uh, that are complementary uh, to what I'm doing um, so that we can help each other out. So if I had a question or wanted to bring them in on a conversation with a client or pick their brain on something that they would be able to support me and, and, and likewise, so, you know, um, they're kind of there supporting each other's business growth in a collaborative method. Excellent, excellent advice. Yeah. Anyone else have anything? And then we'll address Sherry Lee's comment. Um, I, I would say that like, if you're looking to hire somebody to help you out, you should be really careful not to hire somebody who's just like you 
I think it's it's a danger for people. Sometimes they'll, they'll go through the interviewing process and they're like, they're, they're exactly like me, that's great, but they're not gonna give you those complimentary skills that you need to take your business to the next level. Yeah, like if, you're, if you've read Rocket Fuel, you know, I'm the visionary look out for the future and Patty's the integrator. And we have a little bit of both, like she's got some, but it's figuring out where those fit or your personality traits and really be aware of those things so that you get the differences. So I totally agree. So Excellent. one thing that, um, am I unmuted? Yeah. Um, so, um, yes, we yeah, can, we the, can see you. Really quiet. Hello? Antonia, you started talking, but you're muted as well. I started. And did you notice they've switched desks? Yeah, that just hurts. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Kind of mess with us, that's all. Yes, yeah. we can. I hear you. Okay, so um, I think even together, I think, and I've, I've got peers, and I was thinking, well, maybe peers is the right answer, but I think having a solid business coach, someone that understands understands my goals, our goals, and is willing to not just be a yes person. There'll be yes, like how can we make it happen? Yeah. But also the kick in the ass person too, right? Excellent, great idea. I like that. Anyone else have any suggestions? I think um, for, for people that don't have a family member or a spouse that they want to go into or can go into business with? I do. I, think I, I would say to find someone who plays at what you struggle with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Fill those gaps. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think so for me. Yeah, go ahead. I think for me, what resonates is, so as I've listened to everybody, you can, I can see and hear a common thread. And I think that that doesn't necessarily have to be that we're in business with family. I think that's what we've created, what we've built, what we have chosen to uh, respect. And I think that that doesn't go away. I think that that's something you need to extend to your team. And that as you build those same solid relationships and you are forthcoming and honest and respectful and you engage each other, that that is the same thing that can be built. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not a new tool. It's the same tools. It's just about extending them to your team. And then you get to really start to find what their desires are. What is it that they are super excited about? And then when I'm hiring more team members, I now know what it is that we're really good at. And so I start to be able to see the new team member easier on what they bring. So I don't think it needs to be necessarily some of that, that the tide is the relationship from marriage or family, but that is the same kind of qualities and attention I pay to Christian that I do with each other here at Leading Ledgers. Okay. I'd like to play devil, devil's advocate for a moment because I think sure. that there's amazing things that you can do around culture um, to strive towards that type of intimate relationship that you would have with your partner, but it will never get to that level. No employee is gonna be, care as much about your business as a partner does. Um, no partner, is gonna have as close a relationship with you as your spouse. And so I think that it, it is impossible to, to replicate that type of relationship. But I think there's other things that you can do that are good for your business. Like we talked about whether that's hiring an employee that has a complimentary skill, finding a partner that has a complimentary skill. These are things that you can do to get better. But I think that truly, I think it is a, a blessing. And as much as it is a blessing, it's also a curse. I, I don't think we've talked much about yeah. The downsides of, of partnering with families, because there are definitely peaks and valleys, and we all know that intimately. But I think that we all know also intimately that the peaks far outweigh the, the valleys. And I think that's because it's a type of relationship that cannot be replicated with anyone else, unless it's someone you've known your entire life, like a best friend since childhood or something like that. It's, it's about a level of intimacy and a level of communication that is just inherent in the relationship that as much as you can strive to create that within a team will never get to that level unless you have a different level of relationship. I think part of that comes, 
um, like the word that I think of when you're saying all that stuff is vulnerability is, you know, building a team that has, um, well, well, like Tanny and I were vulnerable with each other and that opens up all sorts of feelings for massive hurt as well on the other side. Yeah. So, you know, and we, we, we treat our team or we, we ask our team to be vulnerable. Like we, we work at working with our, our clients to be vulnerable with us. And I think overall that helps to elevate our game a little bit, like makes us, it's a more intimate relationship with our clients and with our team and everything else. And I agree, Andrew, it doesn't, they're not all like family members, but it feels with that one step that it's closer. Excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so Sherry Lee has, oh. has commented in the chat, come on, you guys, you're making this sound too good. And her comment is, you know, does she need to be looking at conferences as dating opportunities instead of professional development? <laughs> but we all know, and as, as Andrew said as well, that it's all not perfect and there are challenges to it. So what I'd like you now to do is talk about one of the biggest challenges that you have working with family member, spouse. Um, can, I just, can I just throw together an idea that I had here about the, the bookkeeper buddy, the bookkeeper buddy dating site, which is Tinder. So um, <laughs> credit, credit to the left or credit to the right and debit to the right, to the left. Perfect. If you want to meet somebody or, or just hook up, right? <laughs> so we'll, we'll look buddy. forward to seeing that Keeping app out buddy. there yeah. um, for the next conference. Um, I would love to take this one on. <laughs> I think, you know, Christian, as much as what we have each is really complimentary, you said it earlier, Juliet, it can also be as difficult. Yeah. So, okay, so, so let me finish. Let me finish yeah. first. So I'm looking for a challenge or a struggle that you have. But because we try as much as possible to, for have, to have this be something that you can learn from the wine and whiskey episodes, also a, a strategy to solve that challenge. You may not have it perfected yet, but yeah. if you're sharing a challenge, please also try and share a strategy to solve that challenge. Okay, go ahead, Tanya. So for us, it is that because I come back from a background of team building and hospitality tourism part of me and Christian comes from hard edged numbers he will tend to look to the cost of things directly where I look more intrinsically so we would fight forever about our team meeting every day we fought and we fought and we fought and now it's one of the blessings that we have on a daily basis and what worked for that is to have us each engaged in our bigger vision. What was it that it was going to give us that didn't necessarily correlate with the bottom line today, but it had other payoffs that, that wasn't a direct route to the bank account, but really was to other things like time away together because we are spending time investing in our team. And it's about the longer term vision and not the short term pop because it's easier to do the work myself than to take the time to train somebody else so that I don't have to do it later. So that we knew what we wanted big picture. We knew that we wanted to feel a certain way about each other and about our, our experience here that made it easier to go through those moments, even though they are really challenging. I had to learn how to communicate in Christian's language and he worked at hearing what their, what I was trying to say would have a better payoff later. Okay, great, great advice. Thank you. Anyone else? Patty, you had one, would you like to share yours? Yeah, I was just gonna say a big challenge, I can't quit. <laughs> like, you know, like a normal job, you can just go, oh, this is too hard. So. It, it's a challenge, I'm being facetious. It's it's a challenge, but it also, you know. Well, she also can't stop. She'll keep working and I feel obligated to keep working next to her even though I can't see straight or I'll stop and start <laughs> working out or whatever. So I'm near her trying to be supportive, but like, you know, in those peaks and valleys, but yeah, it's tough with the, you know, we've, we're a couple, we're married, we parent together, we run this business together, which is like our we're third child all the time. time. And so 
it's really working to get away. And we're staying at our parents for a few months, so we're even in tighter quarters. And and it's just it's figuring out those boundaries. Yeah, um, but but you know um, what you were saying about uh, figuring out the different languages and all that stuff. It actually strengthens the marriage too, yeah. because if you if you're forced to figure this stuff out at work, it's it's naturally can just flow into your personal life too. Okay, what's the deal with you guys switching? Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> They're just this, playing tricks. This time I actually, because I left my drink in here. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I, I Our think... office is too hot for me. <laughs> oh, we have all kinds of heat. Temperature yeah, issues? Just... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I can. Uh, Teresa, go ahead. Yeah, so. Connie and I are sisters, so we grew up together, and in our family, if you didn't have anything nice to say, you don't say anything at all. So when we started, it was really difficult for us to honestly say what needed to be said that you would say to your CFO or that you would say to your CEO. So in the beginning, we really struggled. You know, we didn't want to hurt, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I'm going to hurt Connie's feelings. She's going to hurt my feelings. So and we, we, for probably the first two years, we really struggled and probably even into the third year. And then we started trying to figure out some strategies and I can tell you what we, we do and it may sound really silly, but when we've got one of these big conversations that we, we know we need to have that might be a little painful, we actually will say, okay, Connie, I'm taking off my sister hat and I'm putting on my CEO hat. And we're going to have that conversation and she can do the same. So if she needs to have that kind of a tougher conversation so that we can both give each other permission to really, okay, let's have this conversation. Let's make sure we, we've got everything out on the table and no feelings, love you to bits, but we got to talk about this stuff. So that has really kind of helped us deal with a whole lifetime of being trained with your family, you don't say anything unless you have something nice to say, so. I love that, I love that idea. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anyone else, Andrew? Um, <clears throat> so the, the number one issue that we, we struggle with, my dad and I, is, is communication. Um, and you know, we, we both are passionate people. In fact, I'm different from a lot of you in that my number one problem with my dad and I is we're very similar. Not, we're not as um, um, complimentary as, as many of your relationships are, we're very, very similar. Um, and so communication often became a problem where we would really passionate about a subject and we'd talk over each other and we, we would hear each other, but we wouldn't listen to each other. Um, and so the simplest of techniques um, was something that became very effective by one of the coaches that we worked with, um, which is the talking pen or talking stick uh, approach to communication, which was something that was really effective for us. We're basically like, you can't talk unless you have you have the pen um, and it's like so such a simple thing um, but has become a really really important uh, part of communication and then number two along those same lines um, and, and it's something that I'm learning is repeating back what my father has said to me so that we are getting um, clear communication on my interpretation of what he means by because one of the problems we would often have too is he would say something, but I might interpret it differently than what he was intending. Um, so repeating back to him what I'm hearing from him. So he might say X, Y, and Z, and I'd say, so what I'm hearing from you is Z, Y, and X. Is that correct? And and that and that helped a lot in our communication. So for us, it was communication, 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 and a couple of specific tools that we use are those we talked about. But we probably never would have came to those tools if we didn't bring in outside help and outside support. So mediators and coaches and consultants um, to help us learn how to communicate better. That's, that's a great suggestion. And, and quite honestly applies to any business, regardless of whether you're related or not to your partner, um, the business coach. Um, I mean, Steve and I are big fans of business coaches where we've had those all our, all our business lives pretty much. Um, but, but I love the, the talking pen, talking stick um, idea for teams. Okay, so we've got about two minutes left. Anyone have one last thought or one last strategy challenge that they'd like to share with our audience? I was thinking of 
definitely one of the disadvantages I have is it's hard to turn work off when you're close with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's a weekend or we're hanging with the kids or at the park, it's easy to just naturally get into work conversation and we can never really shut down then and, and yeah. enjoy our time. So a strategy that I've started using is I, I'm aware of that. And during the time, if those thoughts come into my head, I've actually started a notepad on my phone. So I just jot them down and then <laughs> wait for a better time. So we can have real time outside of work time as well. I've got one other tip on that, which is have other family members who just think accounting is really boring. And whenever you start talking about it, they tell you, shut up already. That's, that's worked really well. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good point. We've got the little ones, but they're content yeah, to leave us alone. And... Yeah, we have a I would like yeah. to add in one thing also is that Steve and I have different work styles and I tend to work a lot more into the evening than he does. So one of the things that we do is we decided to take every December, more, December off, it's our sabbatical mm -hmm. month, and mm -hmm. we just unplug and we go away and it's an opportunity to really spend quality time together. Yes, yeah, that's really important. Awesome yeah, mm -hmm. you have some awesome trips. I love those. Okay, so I love them too. Um, <laughs> nine o'clock. Thank you all so much. It's been an awesome conversation. I think that our audience, whether you are in a business with a family member or you're not, um, I think there's lots of great advice there. And I appreciate you all taking the time out of your Wednesday evening uh, to spend with us and share your experiences. Um, and Steve, you're going to end us off with a, a quote. Um, I, am, I am. And yes, uh, what Juliet said, thanks, guys. It, it's been an awesome, awesome conversation. Lots of great ideas. Um, the quote I have this week is from Helen Keller. And it is, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Excellent. Very nice. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Have a fabulous Cheers. week. Cheers. Great, Cheers. everyone. Cheers. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.